Cambridge International is the world's largest provider of international education programs and qualifications for 5 to 19 year olds, from primary through to secondary and up to university. It's just taught me to learn independently and to research independently and to, to think on my own and based on my own initiative. We offer world-class international education through high-quality curriculum, assessments and support for teachers. What I find attractive in what I might call the Cambridge approach is that, first of all, there is content, but there is a primary emphasis on the analysis of the content, and maybe most importantly, being expressive about the content, being able to communicate it. We're a not-for-profit organization and a part of the University of Cambridge. We share the same educational values and the university's commitment to excellence in education. Our qualifications are internationally recognized by the world's universities and employers, providing learners with a global passport to success. To find out how we can work together, contact our customer services team. Good evening everybody um, and welcome to this presentation on the Cambridge International A-Level stream, grade 11s in 2021. I hope that you'll find this session interesting and informative and um, what the, the way we're going to do this is that I'm going to just run through the presentation just to give you all of the details about the A-Level stream and then after that we'll open up the chat for questions and answers and we're happy to field any questions that you might have about the A-Level stream. So first of all, a little bit about Cambridge Assessment International Education, or Cambridge International for short. They're part of the uh, University of Cambridge, and they're the world's largest provider of international education programs and qualifications. Their qualifications are internationally recognized for their high standards. Cambridge International A-Levels are considered to be equivalent to UK A-Levels. And they're recognized for entry into over 1,400 universities worldwide, including all UK universities, all US Ivy League universities. In a survey of university admissions tutors at uh, universities around the world, almost all of them said that Cambridge programs give students excellent preparation for university and help students succeed at university. And all of them said that Cambridge students think logically and pre present coherent arguments and that they have in-depth subject knowledge. A study in the USA indicated that Cambridge students were more likely to enroll in university, showed a strong preference for highly selective institutions, and graduated more quickly than other students. And just a couple of quotes from some deans of admission at uh, high profile universities. The dean of admission at MIT said that Cambridge students are very well prepared for our curriculum, and we find that they have a lot of confidence, but that they also have good, deep subject knowledge and the ability to think critically. And the Dean of Admissions at Duke University in, US, in the US said, Cambridge International AS and A-Levels prepare students well for university because they've learned to go into a subject in considerable depth. There's that ability to really understand the depth and richness and detail of the subject. And that really is what Cambridge International AS and A-Levels are all about. They're about advanced study in areas of particular interest. Um, pupils who do A-Levels will study fewer subjects in more depth. They develop deep subject knowledge, conceptual understanding, and higher order thinking skills. And in order to succeed in A-levels, a strong work ethic and the ability to uh, work independently will be crucial. Uh, the A-level stream is structured as a two-year course. The AS level is done in the first year in grade 11. And that makes up the first half of the A-level. And then, uh, selected AS levels are taken forward to A level in the second year, which would be grade 12 here. So what do we offer? We offer the opportunity for pupils to take a full Cambridge A levels course instead of the IEB matric in grades 11 and 12. So it is a substitute, a, a complete alternative. Um, the reason that we do that is to allow our pupils who want to study overseas the opportunity to apply for and be accepted to the top international universities of their choice. 
It's also to stretch and enrich our pupils academically through more advanced, rigorous, and in-depth study in areas of particular interest. And thirdly, it actually gives pupils who intend to remain in South Africa a competitive edge once they're accepted at the South African University of their choice. The question we're often asked then is, is it better than the IEB matric? And the answer is no. It's high, really important to emphasize that both the IEB matric and the Cambridge A-levels are highly regarded worldwide, and they simply serve different purposes. The A-levels are more focused, they provide easier access to international universities, and the IEB matric is broader and more suitable to apply, for applying to South African universities. However, that doesn't mean that you cannot attend a, a, an international university with an IEB matric or attend a South African university with A-levels. They certainly can be used either way. Um, I think it's fair to say, uh, just to summarize it, that A-levels can be described as a meter wide and two meters deep, whereas an IEB matric is broader and can, and can be described as two meters wide and a meter deep. I think also perhaps at this point, just to point out that there was initially a concern that pupils taking the A-level stream might be guinea pigs, um, but that certainly is not a concern anymore. Um, the A-level stream is now well established. Pupils doing it are thriving academically. They're taking ownership of their academics and certainly they're finding the courses interesting, challenging and engaging. So the structure of the A-level stream at College and DSG is that in grade 11, pupils take four AS level subjects and one IGCSE. And IGCSE is, is essentially equivalent to a grade 10 qualification. And those are chosen to fulfill South African university exemption requirements. Um, four AS levels plus an IGCSE in a second language, Afrikaans, French or Zulu, is acceptable for exemption. And top pupils do have the option to take a fifth AS level subject if they want to. And there are some advantages to doing that in terms of keeping options open. And certainly you could, you, uh, universities in South Africa also like a sixth subject uh, to be offered. Foreign students or anybody actually who has no intention of, of studying in South Africa may actually drop the IGCSE if they wish to. Um, pupils then take three of those AS level subjects forward as A levels in grade 12. And again, strong uh, students may have the option to take a fourth A level subject, subject to availability. Um, and we've also got some students who, uh, who are really strong at maths who look at taking further maths as that fourth subject. We do, uh, in exceptional circumstances, allow that. Um, it's very important also just to emphasize that um, A-level subjects must be chosen to fulfill the requirements of your university and faculty of choice. Um, it's very important to uh, do some research and find out what universities that you may be interested in are going to be looking for. The structure of the A-level stream, um, there are also a few other things to point out. First of all, there is a minimum academic entry requirement because the transition to A-levels is quite challenging. And that is that uh, we expect a 70% aggregate in grade 10 mid-year. Now, this year I know is a slightly different year, but if there is a feeling that the grade 10 mid-year results are not representative, we would look at the results from the rest of the year to date and also grade nine exam results possibly when making that decision. Um, we will also consider uh, those with an aggregate above 60%, although their strong work ethic and the ability to work independently would be very much part of that decision. Um, and in certain cases, there may be subject-specific entry requirements as well. For example, if you wanted to take physics, you need to be taking physical science in grade 10 and doing relatively well in it. Um, all Cambridge exams are written in October and November, so we, our school year is uh, the same as the IEB school year. Um, we, we do all of our main exams in October and November. Um, and the academic day is very much the same as everybody else as well. Subjects are timetabled similarly to IEB subjects, although those taking five subjects will have some free periods available for tutorials or independent work in the library. Um, and when you get to grade 12, there are more lessons in the cycle, but there are also more free periods available for tutorials or independent work. A couple of other things just to point out there that a key part of the success of the A-level stream is that boys and girls remain a, a full part of the life of the school. The boys and girls doing the A-level stream full, take full part in extramural activities, sports, house events and everything else. They still remain part of house tutor groups and they remain an integral part of the school like everybody else.
I think another thing just to point out when we're talking about minimum entry requirements is that it is fair to say that poor results at A-levels would be of less value than good results on the IEB. And so, and that would apply even overseas. So that, that is one of the reasons for the minimum entry requirements to make sure that those who enter it are capable of getting the top results that they need to make these worthwhile. The subject, subjects that we intend to offer uh, in grade 11 on the AS level uh, in 2021 are as follows. And I'm gonna run through these quite carefully with you. So pupils take five subjects, one from each of option one, two, and three, and then two or three from options four, five, and six. So option one is English language and literature, and that is compulsory because it is a requirement for South African exemption. This is a change from what we've been offering in the last two years. We've been offering English language only up until now. And the English language course is a very valuable course, but it is uh, assessed at A level standard, um, which makes it quite difficult sometimes at AS level standard. The English language and literature course is an AS level only course, which means it is assessed at AS level. And what's also very nice about it is that it provides all the necessary um, groundwork and all the necessary um, uh, exposure for uh, possibly doing an A-level in English language or English literature or even both in grade 12. So it, it's a, an option that fits better. In option two, we offer Afrikaans, French or Isizulu at IGCSE level. The reason that we are offering Isizulu and not Isikosa is because unfortunately uh, Cambridge doesn't offer Isikosa, and so Itsizulu is uh, the natural substitute that we can offer. That is very possible for those who are home language Isikosa speakers to make that transition. For those that are not home language speakers, the transition is quite a lot more difficult. Um, so that is certainly something to consider. If there was a second language that you wanted to do that's not offered there, there is the possibility of us discussing it. Um, but we certainly couldn't promise that uh, initially. Mathematics is then compulsory in option three. Um, there is also there an option to take biology in option four instead of mathematics, um, but that's something that we would uh, caution you to be very careful about considering because university and faculty requirements um, would need to be taken into account and without mathematics, a number of those university and faculty options would close. And um, then in options four, five, and six, we offer biology, uh, chemistry, and physics, which are fixed in those options four, five, and six. And then we offer potentially history, geography, music, art, and design, or drama. And those subjects are provisionally in those options, but if uh, there is a large demand for it to be in a different option instead, we would certainly look at that based on the requirements of the 2021 intake. For example, last year we were offering history in option five, and everybody who wanted to take history wanted to take it in option four, so we moved it there. Uh, sorry, the other one that I just want to point out there, which is a new subject, is uh, AS and A-level drama. And that subject is new to Cambridge. They're offering it for the first time in 2021. We are potentially prepared to offer that, but only on condition that we get enough pupils to do it. And there's two reasons for that. First of all, we need to be able to make sure that we can staff A-level drama. And secondly, and perhaps even more importantly, um, it is a subject that requires significant group work in terms of performances. So we need a large enough cohort to make sure that that group work is possible. So some other things that you could consider about the A-level stream. Um, pupils should con or could consider the A-level stream if they're intending to study overseas after school, if they would prefer to study fewer subjects in greater depth uh, in grade 12, or for that matter, if they'd like to get a head start on their compatriots at a South African university. Um, you should continue with the IEB matric if you intend to study at a South African university after school and you're concerned that you might struggle with the added rigor and depth of A-level courses. A very important thing to point out that there is, a, is, is that there is an extra cost attached to taking the A-level stream. This is to partially cover the operational costs associated with offering the A-level stream. And that cost this year was 16,500 Rand for a year. And it will be of the same order in 2021. 
And the other very important thing to point out is that once pupils have started on the A-level stream, they will not be able to change back to the IEB matric. The reason for that is to catch up six subjects which are completely different on the IEB would be very challenging. And also we do a lot of planning based on the numbers for A-levels and IEB, and it could have an impact on class sizes and teaching if people are jumping back and forth. We will, in very exceptional circumstances, consider uh, allowing people to change back, but um, that, as I say, would only be in exceptional circumstances and only very early on. Also, just to point out that the subjects, particularly those ones with asterisks, are uh, offered subject to sufficient demand. Um, and sufficient demand there basically means that it won't have any negative impact on the IEB classes and teaching with those. Uh, we wouldn't expect to be oversubscribed at this stage, but if we were, um, the top candidates based on previous academic performance would be allocated places in a particular subject. Then the grade 10 maths extension class, it's important to emphasize that that's not a requirement for the A-level stream because all content for AS level maths will be covered in grade 11. Um, any content that is extra in grade 10 will be caught up and most of the extra content that is covered in grade 10 is content required for South African MBTs, uh, for university entrance into South African universities. And that can be caught up quite easily in grade 11 and 12 as necessary. Also, just to uh, emphasize that teachers of the A-level subjects are experienced, um, probably with the exception of drama, they have all taught the A-level uh, subjects before, and all of the A-level teachers will have completed extra training through Cambridge as well. So, some advantages of taking the A-level stream is that it is an internationally recognized qualification. So internationally recognized as the premier university entrance qualification around the world. Um, A-levels qualification streamlines the process for admission to overseas universities because all the overseas universities know exactly what they're dealing with. Um, pupils benefit from an in-depth, rigorous university-style approach to learning, and it gives uh, pupils a head start in tertiary education in South Africa. Some disadvantages to consider is that uh, careful selection of subject choices is really important to ensure uh, matriculation exemption in South Africa, and also to make sure that uh, pupils meet the specific faculty requirements both in South Africa and overseas. Um, entry requirements for South African universities can tend to be a little bit more challenging. Um, UCT is a particular case in, in point there. Um, but although the entry requirements are more challenging, South African universities are also very open to accepting A-level students and, and will look at each case individually. Um, it says there the late re release of Cambridge results. That's not really a particular issue, particularly if students are applying to university with their grade 11 AS results. Um, the Cambridge results are probably released a week or two later than the IEB results in January. And then the step up to Cambridge AS and A levels from grade 10 is challenging, um, and that needs to be borne in mind. So what we would require from you if you're interested in this is a decision on whether to take the A-level stream or not by the end of this term. The reason for that is that we need to finalize classes, we need to organize and order textbooks which mainly come from overseas, and we need to plan for 2021 adequately. Right, here are some advantages of taking the A-level stream according to some of our A-level students. Uh, they say that the work is interesting, relevant, and engaging. They like the fact that there's fewer subjects, so it's more specialized. They make the point that if you apply yourself, it is not too difficult, and everybody does it in the UK. Um, they like the, more independent, the, the greater independence that they get and the free periods. And they are used to working independently. In fact, in this period that we've had recently, online learning has been no problem at all for the A-level students. Um, the exams, the final exams are shorter and more spread out. Uh, the longest exam that they write is two hours. Um, there's lots of accessible resources available uh, because it's an international qualification. Uh, they like the fact that there are some good experienced teachers teaching the A-levels. They have easier access to overseas universities and uh, they get to write off the first additional language in grade 11, which many of them see as an advantage. Um, in the booklets that you've been sent, there's a lot more uh, information and a lot of links that you can uh, 
follow to find even more information about the A-Levels uh, program. And certainly the booklet that, that's been sent to you has got everything that you should need in it. You're very welcome to get hold of me um, at my email address there and discuss it further. And also there's the option on the, um, the survey that I've sent out to uh, request a meeting with me as well to discuss it further. And certainly the current A-Level students are all very, very happy to uh, give you advice on them as well. Right, I think I've done a lot of talking. Um, so I think at this point we're going to stop and we're going to field some questions. Um, Mr. Smith is going to help me with those. Uh, I've got a question here. Please, can you clarify the view that A-Levels offer a head start to students at South African universities? What is the evidence research base for this uh, statement? I think what that is based on is the fact that the, the subjects that you take are uh, in much greater depth and certainly uh, go much further than the matric subjects. So although you're doing fewer subjects, provided you are studying those subjects at university, you are ahead in terms of uh, the content and also in terms of the approach that you've taken to learning them. Uh, the approach to A-levels is a much more university style approach to learning um, in terms of a lot of self-study, a lot of independent work, and a lot of uh, tutorial type study, which is very much more similar to a university style of learning. Um, there's a question here on any feedback on the ease of entry in the UK with an IEB. Um, you can certainly uh, apply to and be accepted to universities in the UK with an IEB, and there really is no problem with that at all. Um, I think the point is that with an A-level, uh, you are applying with something that they're very comfortable with and that they understand. And so there's very little explanation to do when you're applying with an A-level. Uh, there are a handful of top universities in the UK which don't accept uh, the IEB, but they're very few and far between. It's, uh, Oxford is one of them. Cambridge has been one, but they are starting to, for certain courses, accept IEB now. Um, the London uh, School of Business, I think, is another one. But in most cases, UK universities will accept IEB qualifications. Um, a question here, if you take an extra subject and you find it's too much work, are you able to drop it? The answer is absolutely yes. Uh, just uh, bear in mind, if you are taking an extra subject, so a sixth a, a subject or a fifth AS level and you drop it, just make sure that you're not dropping a subject that you need in terms of uh, your university and faculty requirements. Another question here, how many students are required in order for a subject to be available? That will really depend on the subject and what impact it has on the IEB. So I wouldn't want to give you an exact number. I don't want to say five or three or 10. It will depend very much on the subject. Um, and we will obviously do everything we can to offer that subject if we're able to. Certainly on the drama side, it would be at least five to enable uh, group work. Um, a question here, is there a big advantage in doing five A-levels in matric? Or might it negatively impact on doing well in four A-levels? Uh, just to clarify there that um, you actually only have to do three A-levels in matric and four would be extra. Um, the AS levels in grade 11 would be where you might do five. What we've seen uh, certainly in the last two years is that it can have a negative impact on uh, the other subjects if you're taking an extra one. Obviously, it dilutes the time that you have to spend on each of those subjects. Uh, so it's something that needs to be uh, very carefully thought about. Um, that said, it is for, for uh, Students who are very strong academically, it is certainly a very possible thing to do. And we've had some uh, pupils certainly last year who were very successful in, in managing that. The question here, if your average is on the cusp of the cutoff mark, will you still be considered? Uh, the answer is yes, you will certainly be considered, um, but we will look at more than just your mark. They will look at, um, we'll, we'll uh, get opinion from tutors and house masters or house mothers, and teachers and get a good feel for what your, um, your academic abilities are and particularly what, uh, how good a work ethic and an ability to work independently uh, that candidate has. Um, a question here, if study is much more independence focused, how can students be assured of teacher support? 
um, there are still the same number of lessons in a cycle that, um, that we would have on the IEB. I think when I say independent learning, it means that there is a lot more work to be done outside the classroom than uh, just in the classroom. And I think the approach is a little bit different. So the approach in A-levels is really that we would expect students to be working ahead so that class time can be about getting in-depth understanding and finer detail about the concepts that are being covered rather than being spoon-fed the, the, uh, the material and the content. That's really what we mean about independent learning. The, the, um, the teacher support is probably just as good, if not more than the IEB, because the classes tend to be smaller. Um, so there's a lot of teacher support and a lot of one-on-one -on -one support. Uh, please clarify if a migrant student can take four subjects in grade 11. That would obviously be something up for discussion, but provided that would fulfill the requirements for what that student wanted to do after school, yes, it would be possible because certainly a student in England would normally do four AS levels and then three A levels. So yes, it is a possibility. Um, a question, if computer studies or IT cannot be offered, is it possible for a learner to choose, who chooses A-level to continue studying IEB IT? That is not possible. And the reason for that is that uh, universities will not accept uh, mixed qualifications. So they won't accept part IEB, part A-level. Um, so there really would be no point in doing that because the IEB would not count towards anything if you were doing an A-level qualification as well. If one does not do A-levels, does that close doors in American universities? Absolutely not. You can certainly apply to American universities with an IEB matric. I think the A-levels just perhaps smooth the process because American universities are all very clear on what A-levels are and they know exactly how to understand them and to grade them. Whereas the IEB matric, many American universities may not have a clear idea what those are. Um, American, uh, sorry, ac academic demands on sporty youngsters, what has been the experience in respect of keeping sports and academics? Um, our uh, sportsmen who are doing the A-levels have been very successful at that. Um, in our grade 12 group, we have two first aid rowers. Uh, we have a first team cricketer. Um, we've had a few first team, uh, well, a number of first team sportsmen and they have managed absolutely fine. First team sportswomen as well for that matter. It is very possible, but it requires obviously careful management of one's time. Um, and as long as people are able to manage their time carefully, it is very, very possible. I think maybe just to add to that question about the sport, the only um, possible uh, consideration in terms of the sport is that if there are any sports tours that happen in uh, October, uh, pupils wouldn't be able to, to go on those in grade 11 because that is when their exams are already being written. The exams are slightly earlier. So any sports tours in October wouldn't be possible. Is the level of Afrikaans similar to that of grade 11 IEB? I would say the level is probably actually slightly lower um, because it's an IGCSE course, but the focus is different. Uh, the focus of IGCSE, of all the languages for that matter, is on communication. So the exams are, are um, about a listening exam and a written exam, but it's all based on being able to communicate in a language. So there's no literature, there's no books to read, and it's all about testing whether pupils understand the language. How many students are currently doing A-levels? Uh, in grade 12, we have 16 pupils doing A-levels, and in grade 11, we have 13 pupils doing A-levels. Um, and we would be looking for a feasible uh, cohort of somewhere in the region of 10 to 25 would make it uh, worthwhile. I think over 25 and we need to start looking at uh, doubling the classes. Um, but in our experience, we probably, uh, an, an aim of 20 would be brilliant. Um, do all your subjects have to be A-levels or can you choose a few subjects and do the others as IEB? Uh, I think I've answered that already. Um, we are offering the A-levels as a, a completely separate stream. And so uh, to take A-levels, you need to be doing only A-levels. The um, universities don't, ex and uh, University of South Africa certainly don't accept mixed qualifications. And so uh, in most cases, we certainly wouldn't consider offering that. Um, if there is a specific case that, that you want to discuss, for example, you're doing the IEB and you want to take 
one particular subject at A-level, we might be able to discuss that. But certainly for what we're offering here, we offer only a full A-level course. Um, how well is the IEB regarded in Europe, not just the UK? I think, um, Mr. Smith or Dr. Gaines, I don't know if you want to come in here on that question. Um, I would say that the IEB is well regarded worldwide, um, but the same as I described for America, I think in some cases uh, for European universities, there may be some extra uh, legwork required in terms of explaining what the IEB is and what the standards are. I don't know if you want to add anything to that, Dr. Gaines or Mr. Smith. Uh, no, not really. Uh, it, the European universities, um, one would need to just give them more information about exactly what the uh, content that was covered, the curriculum, and um, and I'm sure that they'd be fairly um, accepting of it. I We've had a couple of boys who've applied to German universities and with the necessary support from the um, IB offices and from us, uh, they got into universities fine. Um, and, you know, it's the same for the next question. I mean, the MBCHB in the UK, uh, IB results are, 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 are very well accepted, particularly Edinburgh University Medical Faculty. Um, they um, obviously have to be superb results, uh, but they are accepted. Thank you. Um, there's a question about why are the A-levels considered for academically strong kids? Is it very difficult? And the courses are more in-depth, the subject's uh, material is more in-depth and it does require more critical thinking. Um, so yes, uh, in terms of the subjects, they are probably more difficult, but the flip side to that is that in grade 12, uh, you would only be doing half the subjects. You would be doing three subjects in more depth rather than six subjects at a more broader level. Um, the question here, is one able to take an ASA level subject, which they didn't take in grade 10? Uh, in some cases, yes, it is possible. For example, we do have a, a pupil uh, in grade 11 taking, uh, in fact, in grade 12 now, who didn't do biology in grade 10 or life sciences in grade 10, but is taking it now and doing very well in it. So it is possible, but it will depend on the subject and on the abilities of that particular pupil. How favorably do the US look on A-levels as opposed to IEB? Um, <laughs> that's quite a general question and I think quite difficult to answer. I think it's probably clearer to say that US universities know what they all know the A-levels and they know exactly how to pitch them, whereas some, but not all, wouldn't know about the IEB. Um, I think also with the A-levels, they're aware that the, of the extra depth of the A-levels and so at certain US universities, you can get credit uh, for first-year courses if you've done A-levels. Um, I don't think I can be much more specific than that. Mr. Smith? Yeah, in my experience, um, when I have to write references for children for UK universities, they're always asking me how well matched is this child to this course that they want to take. So the British mindset is very much in depth of knowledge and suitability of a particular child for a particular course of study. The American universities, when I have to write references for them, they are far, they, they enjoy a far broader um, thing. They want to know what sport you played and they'll offer you a scholarship for, for, for a sport um, and, and community engagement and things. So they're far more interested in the broader um, child uh, and the, the broader interests of the child, as well as the academics, of course. So the IB is not a bad, uh, qualification to apply to a USA university with because it has got seven subjects um, and um, they so they're not averse to it and there's certain advantages that they would see in the fact that you've done a wide range of subjects and done well in them um, and also you know at St Andrews we offer and yes we offer so much extra things so if you've been involved in music or sport or community engagement the American universities love that. Thank you. Um, there's a question here. Some background would be helpful for how many years has SACDSG been offering A-levels? The answer of that is, to that is uh, this is our second year. So next year will be our third year of offering full A-levels. Although we have offered 
uh, A-levels as uh, ex uh, extension and enrichment courses for much longer than that. But for a full A-level course, this is, next year will be our third year of offering it. Um, the question then is, how have our results compared with averages internationally and from other top UK international schools? We only have final AS level results at the moment. Our first cohort are writing their final A levels this year. So I don't have an answer for that because the top UK uni uh, schools don't uh, write AS levels. They just do it all in one go. Um, but I can tell you that our results last year in AS levels compared very favorably with certainly any other South African school that offers this, such as St. John's or, or Somerset College. Um, are the physics and chemistry labs fully equipped for all A-level pracs? The answer is absolutely yes. Uh, we are fully equipped and we have everything that we need to offer those, those practicals and for, for biology as well for that matter. Um, can you drop out of A-levels and go back to the IEB if it's not working for you? Um, I think I did uh, answer that in the presentation. Um, the general rule is no, you can't change back because catching up on the IEB in six subjects is, is really a, a very, very big ask. That said, we have had one pupil who has changed back early in the year in grade 11. Um, and so it's not completely out of the question, but there needs to be a very good reason for it and that pupil needs to be able to catch up those subjects quickly and, and properly. How many subjects do UK students take in AS? Uh, UK students take four AS levels usually and then drop one of them to finish off as A levels. They don't write an AS level exam anymore in the UK though. Uh, they write it all in one. So what they do is they start with four subjects in, in their first year of A levels and they drop one going into their second year of A-levels. So what we're offering is very much the same. Uh, the only addition to it is the IGCSE in the second language. Um, do you write the AS level in grade 11 and the A level in grade 12? Can the foreign additional language only be written in grade 11? Yes, that is what we do. We write the AS level in grade 11 and the A level in grade 12. Um, there is the possibility to rewrite the AS level. So if you've done badly in a particular subject in grade 11, you can rewrite it when you're doing the A-levels in grade 12 without any, uh, certainly any academic cost to you. Um, the foreign additional language is an IGCSE, so it is written off in grade 11. If it goes badly for some reason, it can be rewritten in grade 12. Um, why isn't business studies considered for A-levels? Um, there are two good reasons for that. The first is that business studies or accounting or economics for that matter is not a prerequisite for any university courses anywhere in the world, even if you're doing a BCom or a business science degree, um, business studies or accounting or economics are not required. And the other reason is really a, a purely logistical one. Uh, our business studies uh, and accounting uh, departments don't have the capacity to be able to offer it and that's the other reason that it's not offered at this stage. Uh, do the South African universities take account for the fact that the A-level studies are more difficult and therefore the grades may not be as high as IEB results? So if you were to look at the uh, prospectus for uh, various South African universities, you'll see that they have completely different entry requirements for national senior certificate and for A-levels, and they all publish those A-level requirements. Um, they, I, would, I wouldn't say that they take into account the fact that the A-level studies are more difficult, although they do offer extra points. If, they, if they're going to be basing their offers on points, they offer extra points for the A-levels. So the A-levels are usually worth two more points each than an, uh, an NSC, an IEB subject would be. The AS levels are rated as the same as matric subjects. So for an AS level, in terms of points, you would get the same number of points as you would for an IEB matric subject. Um, but the point requirements are slightly different in some cases. Each university and each faculty in each university is different. Um, but I think it's fair to say that uh, on balance, entry requirements are probably slightly more challenging for South African universities with A levels. Um, based on past results, in which subjects have you achieved your top results? Um, I would say at this stage, um, certainly in the past, we've received some out achieved some outstanding results in mathematics. In fact, in most of our subjects, we've achieved some outstanding results. Um, the most consistently good results last year were probably in chemistry and physics. Um, we had one candidate this year writing English literature, and they got an A, so that was outstanding. Um, 
We've had um, outstanding results in English language, a number of fantastic A's there. Um, we've had an A in history. Um, so many of our subjects, we, in fact, most of our subjects, we've had excellent results in. Um, as I said, our sample size is probably a bit small. So to say which subjects do we achieve our top results in is probably a little bit more difficult to say. Um, the average class sizes for A-level students. So in English, it would be the size of the A-level cohort. So this year, that would be uh, 16 in grade 12, sorry, 16 last year in grade 11, and this year, 13 in grade 11. Um, for the other subjects, it varies um, anywhere between, uh, if we're able to offer it, one, um, although that's certainly not always the case, up to a maximum size of 16 and anything in between. So for our grade 12s doing A-levels this year, most of the classes are between three and 10. Um, additional parental involvement in A-levels support, extra tuts, et cetera. Um, I'm not entirely sure I understand that question, but um, additional parental involvement in A-level support. So I think if you're asking there about whether extra tutors are required or extra lessons outside of this, um, we found that in general that it hasn't been required um, because there's a very close one-on-one -on -one relationship with the teachers involved. Um, perhaps, Mr. Jarvis, if you want to just add more to that question, you're welcome to do that. Uh, please confirm in AS level, SAL will be equivalent to grade 10 standards, so no additional workload. And please explain the English language and literature subject. Okay, so first of all, with the, uh, uh, the first additional language, so the Afrikaans or the French or the Zulu, uh, that is at IGCSE level, not at AS level. So it is essentially at a grade 10 level. Um, obviously, pupils need to be aiming for an A in that or a very good result. And so there is still additional workload to that. Um, but the additional workload for the first additional language is perhaps not as, uh, no, I don't want to say not as demanding because it's different for different people. Um, but th there is a an additional workload there and pupils do need to take it seriously because uh, for South African exemption requirements, a C is the, is the minimum requirement for that IGCSE course. Um, as I said, though, those language courses are very much about communication. So someone who's a first language Afrikaans speaker, for example, would really not have uh, a lot of trouble with that, that course. Um, those who are second language speakers will still need to do some work with it. Um, and then the English language and literature course um, is an AS level only course, and it is a it has aspects of A level English language and A level English literature. Um, and it provides a very good basis for further study in either of those subjects, but it is much more similar to what kids are, are used to in grade 10 in, in, in English, and that it has a language component and a literature component. Um, the English language that we have been offering up to now is very much a linguistics course. It's a very worthwhile course, but um, it is, it's, it's much more of an A-level course, if I can put it that way. Um, I don't know there if uh, Mr. Maloney or Mr. or Mrs. Sullivan or Mrs. Webster want to add anything there. I'm going to. Oh, Mr. Maloney has disappeared. I think he's uh, Mrs. Sullivan. Mrs. Sullivan, is there anything you'd like to add? Hi, Graham. Can you hear me? Uh, yes, I can. Oh, fantastic. Sorry, the kids are watching TV, so I'm just jumping in. <laughs> I think um, <laughs> I think the, just the reasoning behind this this once off course is that this um, A level landlet offers you two paths to travel along as you move into your A level. So you might find a sneaky passion for linguistics, or you might find that you actually love literature a little bit more than you did, for example, in grade ten when your mind might have been elsewhere. So we've tried to open up your options in, this, in offering this course rather than close them down. And I think that's just something to, to bear in mind when you, you have to take it, but it's a nice, it's, got, it's gonna offer you sort of two, two roads to journey down. And if you like both language and literature, you, correct me if I'm wrong, Mr. Kreese, but you're able to take both English language and English literature in grade 12. You certainly are, yes. Thank you, cool. Mrs. Thanks Sullivan. very much. Pleasure. 
Okay, um, then there's a question here. Will you be honest with feedback when a candidate you feel will not cope with independent studies applies for the A-level qualification? I can tell you for sure we will be. Um, we really don't want to subject someone who is not necessarily going to cope with this um, uh, to the A-level course if they, if they are not going to cope with it. And I can tell you that in the last two years when we've been de uh, making decisions on the A-level course, there are a number of pupils who we have turned down based on exactly that. Um, any idea regarding Netherlands universities accepting IEB qualifications? I don't, I'm not able to give you a specific answer on that, Mr. Smith, I don't know if you can. I know of, I know of a couple of um, college boys who've gone and studied in the Netherlands and they've done very well. Some of them have got a degree first from a South African university, then gone across. Um, but once again, our package of information that we can supply to a university so that they can assess, you know, what, they, what the, um, the IB qualification is about is quite comprehensive and, uh, and usually it satisfies their, um, their requirements as well. So I've, I don't think, you know, if you get good enough IB results, uh, there's no reason why a Netherlands University would not accept, uh, accept you. Thank you, Mr. Smith. Um, uh, okay, so the question here I think is around, does the IEB subject content and approach provide a suitable foundation in grade eight to 10, uh, as opposed to an IGCSE, which international students would be doing? I think very definitely yes. The content that we do in the IEB up to grade 10 is very similar. Um, and certainly the approach that we have here, we've had no, no problem in terms of approach with um, students making the change. As I say, in some subjects, particularly in the science, there is a, a fairly large step up, um, but there is no problem with, with the IEB in terms of well, what we offer up to grade 10 in terms of a, a foundation to change over to A-levels. Uh, the minimum number of students needed for art and design, it will really depend on the size of the IEB class and on the capacity of the uh, art and design teachers. Um, but I would imagine that for a subject like art and design, we would probably be able to uh, offer it to a pretty small class. I wouldn't be able to give you an exact number there though. Uh, please elaborate the UCT admission issue with A-levels. How long have you got? <laughs> no, um, so UCT uh, bases each, so first of all, UCT's prospectus is about 80 pages long, and each faculty has completely different requirements, both for NSC and for uh, international qualifications. Uh, for UCT in most of their faculties, they require six subjects uh, for uh, applications, and obviously in grade 11 we are offering five, the uh, faculty that that doesn't apply to, interestingly, is the science faculty, which are very happy with five subjects. However, if a student is applying with five subjects, they will certainly still consider that uh, given justification from the school on why that student is taking five subjects. However, they would have to meet the points requirement uh, using only five subjects instead of six, and that makes it in certain cases, particularly in the commerce faculty, quite challenging. Um, that is uh, usually uh, made up for by the fact that the A-levels in grade 12 come with extra points and make up the difference for the missing subject. Um, that in a very quick nutshell is the problem with UCT admission. Uh, they are very open to looking at each individual case. In fact, for this year's grade 12s, I've had a very in-depth discussion with their admission staff, and they are very open and very willing to be helpful in every way that they can. But certainly what there is on paper for UCT makes it quite tricky in some cases. Uh, a request for a follow-up discussion. I will follow that up from the survey, because this is an anonymous attendee. Um, any comments with respect to accounts and business studies as a subject? I think I've offered that or uh, answered that already in terms of um, staff uh, capacity and also the fact that they are not requirements for entrance to any university faculties. Um, how different is the subject content for IEB subjects from Cambridge A-levels? Uh, it depends on the subject, but in most cases, quite significantly different, and certainly a lot more in-depth. Uh, for example, in maths, 
Uh, there's a lot more of a focus on mechanics, uh, almost stuff that we do in physics in the IEB. Um, and there's a lot less in terms of the geometry on A-levels. Um, uh, the sciences, physics and chemistry are separate subjects on A-levels as opposed to physical science on IEB. So in both cases, there's quite a lot more depth in chemistry and physics. Uh, with the English, um, the, the grade 11 course will be uh, similar in many ways, but the English language and the English language A-level courses uh, are significantly different. The language is very much a linguistics course. The literature is very focused on uh, literature only. Um, so yes, uh, I would say that the content in many cases differs quite significantly. In other cases, for example, in biology, the grade 11 AS uh, content um, is quite similar to the IEB content. Dr. Gens, I don't know if you want to add anything to that. No, I think... Uh, Hi, um, thank you very much. Uh, the biology is, is quite similar, uh, grade 11, um, on the AS course, and then it, it splits quite significantly in, in the A levels. Even though the same content is covered, it takes it one step further and does a lot of statistical analysis as well um, in the evolutionary components. So it's okay. It's similar, but, but different in grade <laughs> 12. <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Gates. Um, a question here about if you're only doing five AS level subjects in grade 11, how do you calculate your admission requirements for university compared to the IEB, which has six? Uh, every university, including South African universities, has specific entry requirements for the A levels and the AS levels. So you will have a specific set of requirements that you need to uh, take cognizance on in terms of your admission requirements. They are different to the NSC requirements. How are A-level results integrated into IEB results for A? They, oh, in terms of the way the schools um, report them, uh, we will report the A-level results separately, but we will include them as, as part of our, our IEB results report as well. Mr. Smith or Dr. Gens, I don't know if you want to correct that or add anything to that. Um, well, in terms of the grade 11 results, um, we just converted to out of 600. So uh, you can then, those, uh, those A-level kids slot into the IB so that we can produce a rank of all the children. Um, that's for internal, that's purely for internal results. But at the end of this year, when our IB results, matric results and our A-level results come out, they will be reported separately. Thank you. Um, have we seen students struggle when they change from IEB to A-levels and what support is there for such students? Um, as I said, there is a very close uh, teacher uh, uh, contact with pupils and, and as the classes are very small, there is a lot of support for students. They get extra tutoring in terms of the school, in terms of they have a house tutor and uh, I work as an A-level tutor for them as well. And where students are struggling, we work with them to, to work out why they're struggling. And usually that's, that's to do with their approach to learning. It's about getting them to work in a, in a slightly different way. And where necessary, we look at changing subjects. So if they're taking extra subjects, we can, we can uh, make a plan to, to change that. Um, so yes, we have seen some students struggle, but the vast majority have actually taken to it and flown when they've, when they've started on the A-levels. How did the Cambridge A-levels perform last year? As I say, we don't have final A-level results yet. We've only got AS-level results. Uh, in general, those results were very good. We were very happy with them. Uh, there were some students who were unhappy with their AS-level results for various reasons. But as I said, what's nice about those is that because they're not a final exit point, those students can rewrite those AS-levels at no academic cost in their grade 12 year. They would just add on to their A-levels. Um, but uh, if we were to compare our results with other similar South African schools who offer A-levels, such as St. John's or Somerset College, we compared very favorably with them. Um, okay, so there's a question here about IEB results and application to the USA. Question says, my son is in matric and just going through the process of applying to an American university with IEB results. 
university required that we submit his marks to a private independent company, of which there are many who converted his IEB results to a grade point average, which is a mark they understand. This was a very easy process. Yes, in many cases, that is the process I think that, that students have to follow. It's an extra process and probably comes with a little bit of extra cost. Um, but you know, with A-levels, you wouldn't have to do that necessarily because they know what the A-levels are already. But certainly, I mean, as I, I think we've said a few times already, IEB results are absolutely suitable for applying to the USA as well. Mr. Smith, I don't know if you have anything to add to that. No, okay. Can a teacher advise you to go back to the IEB if you're not coping? <laughs> um, I think that would be a far wider discussion than just one teacher advising you to do that. And as I say, in general, we don't allow pupils to go back to the IEB because of the load that it would put onto that, that, that pupil. Um, I think we're very careful about uh, allowing pupils in in the first place who we think will cope. Okay, there's a comment there. I, I won't read the whole comment, but just saying that um, it's the right road and choice is important in schooling. Thank you for that. Um, what I'm trying to establish is if the student is generally not strong in languages in grade 10, but very strong in math science, then it looks like A-levels are a good option. We found actually that for students who are strong in science, it's particularly appealing. Um, because those students can essentially drop the, the languages in, in grade 11 and take only the sciences in grade 12 at A-level. So for students who are strong at, at the sciences and maths, A-levels are certainly a very, very good option. Any comments on the strength of A-levels relative to international baccalaureate? Um, the international baccalaureate is a, is a slightly different qualification. It's structured differently, but I think worldwide it's recognized as very much of the same standard, A-levels and international baccalaureate. Um, certainly in terms of points for university, they offer the same for international baccalaureate and A-levels. Um, I think the reason we, we're not offering international baccalaureate is just that the changeover is far more difficult. Uh, Mr. Smith or Dr. Gaines, I don't know if you want to add anything to that. Yeah, the, uh, the international baccalaureate is just the most stunning curriculum. Wow. Um, I would love to be able to offer it. <laughs> it's very expensive. And it also requires that you have highly trained, specific, specially trained uh, IB teachers. Um, and there's not enough, there's not a good, big enough pool of them in South Africa. So, you know, if you needed a teacher for a subject, you'd need to train them up and that would take a year. Um, it is a, it's a lovely um, uh, qualification. It's very broad as well. It's got sort of seven subjects um, and in depth, but um, we've, we've interrogated that option very thoroughly. But as I say, it's very expensive and to find trained teachers uh, is very difficult uh, in South Africa. Uh, whereas, you, you know, in other countries where you have a, a, a great number of IB qualified teachers in circulation, you can staff them your, your school much more easily. Thank you. Um, have we got an indicative number of students who would qualify or intend for the 2021 batch? Um, I think we've got a very strong group at both DSG and college, so there's a large number of students who would qualify. It's really about how many students actually want to do it. I mean, I think, as I said earlier, we'd probably be targeting 20 as a, as a really good number for an A-levels group. Do you do AS level exams in grade 11? Yes, the answer is yes. We do do the AS level exams at the end of grade 11 and then the A-level exams at the end of grade 12. Will a student be judged on how well they have done in the subject they want to take, whether they are accepted or not? Um, so I think we are basing uh, our uh, entry requirements on an aggregate, but also certainly looking at the subjects um, that that pupil has taken and how well they've done in those subjects. For, so as an example, someone might have a 70% aggregate, but they're only averaging 50% in science and they want to do physics and chemistry. And that would certainly be something that, that, that we would flag and have a very close look at. 
Um, do either of the schools have a career guidance professional who might be able to help a child decide what degree they need to read at university so that they can then decide what subjects they need to take for the A-levels? Um, so the grade 11 um, AS levels are still fairly general and they follow pretty close to the pattern of the grade 10 subjects. We do have career guidance professionals. They tend to be the life orientation teachers, but uh, certainly the academic heads and uh, academic advisors and tutors are all available and willing and, and able to help with that as well. We also do get uh, professionals from outside who come in and, and, and assist with this and, and, uh, and help with subject choice. Um, and that certainly would have been something that was considered going into grade 10 as well. Uh, Mr. Smith or Dr. Gaines, would you like to add to that? Yes, we must not forget we've got two wonderful educational psychologists on both sides. Yes. And um, there is also on our campus junction Go Study portal, which um, is there for pupils to look at and decide on career choices based on their current subjects and future subjects, perhaps even. Thank you. Um, does Tux University recognize A-levels? The answer is yes, absolutely. They welcome A-levels at Tux. Uh, do you need Afrikaans? Um, you'd certainly need uh, a second language for, um, for university exemption purposes, but I don't think for Tux, it I, I stand to be corrected, but I don't think Tux uh, is Afrikaans medium anymore. I think they have made their language of instruction English. And if someone knows better than me, please say so. It certainly wouldn't be any different to applying to TUX with an IEB. Um, are South African universities happy to accept students who do not do English as an A-level subject? Yes, absolutely. The AS level subjects are the level uh, that are uh, the equivalent level, if you like, for entry to South African universities, and that's why we do English as an AS level subject, but that is good enough. You certainly do not need to do it as an A level to get into a South African university. If my daughter is interested in studying medicine, would A levels be acceptable at a South African university or would she have to focus overseas? Yes, uh, A levels would be acceptable at a South African university. I think you do need to do some uh, homework there in terms of what subjects would be required. Particularly for medicine, it would probably be a requirement to do six subjects rather than five because they are looking for physics, chemistry, and biology. If A-levels is more rigorous than IEB, how do you weight mark lists accordingly to work out your top 10 students or to make decisions around academic colors, ducks, etc.? cetera? Um, Mr. Smith and Dr. Gaines, I'm gonna pass that one to you. <laughs> <laughs> oh my word, it's a difficult question and we, we've, we've wrangled over this because um, we, you know, our A-level children are bright and they work hard, but they're writing more difficult exams. But if you think of it in a sense that, now nah, I'm going to get myself into trouble, I know, but, um, <laughs> you, you know, some children might do a package of subjects that might have a be it's easier. So let's say you do physical science and accounting and IT, um, and then another child does three other subjects. You know, we we don't weight the, the difficulty of those subjects. So that's the logic I've taken into, well, these A-level children have just chosen a different package of subjects. So they need to go and get their 80% to get their um, their uh, you know, academic honours and 75 for colours. So we just take the percentage that they get overall. Um, it's been a very difficult one. <laughs> and we're still um, playing. That's been the logic I've, I've applied to it. Thank you. Um, do you suggest that we research university requirements in the UK during grade 11? I would say yes, the earlier you research, the better. Um, definitely. There are uh, very useful resources out there available. Um, such as the Russell Group uh, document that I think I sent with all of the other information. Um, but definitely, the earlier you research, the better. Should a child write the IEB matric and then, for example, St. John's College for a post matric, but they still need to do a two year stint there to get A levels, or can it be done in one year? If you've already finished the IEB matric, you can change to the A levels in one year. 
but then obviously what you are doing is an extra year of school in order to get there. And then if one plans to go to an Australian university, which curriculum is, would be suitable? Um, either curriculum will get you into an uni Australian university because so many South Africans tend to end up in Australia. They all, in Australia, they know the IED, I think, quite well as well. Right, those are all the questions that I have there. Um, I'll give everyone a, a moment or two just in case there's one or two more. Perhaps in the meantime, if you don't mind, um, I'm going to put Michael Veloza on, who's one of our A-level students, just to see if he has anything that he'd like to comment. Michael, if you're there. Um, yeah, so I think you, you pretty much got to everything. Um, I think the standout thing for me, though, with um, doing the A-level syllabus is um, it, it, it's all been about a change in my mindset in terms of how I've approached my schoolwork. Um, and it's, it's definitely more of an, an assertive way of learning. I like to think about it like that. Um, because it, it's, um, you very much get out what you put in. So however hard you work for the test is a lot more um, related, related to your, your mark. I mean, I think that for me has been the real difference between the IEB is that it's very much polarized um, the group of us taking the A-levels. Uh, when we went into the A-levels, we probably all had an average within about 15%. Um, and that's probably been stretched to about 40% now. So it's, it's, it's very much, um, you know, evident in terms of what you put in um, to see how well you do in the course. Thank you, Michael. Um, while Michael's on, I don't know if anyone wants to type any questions for him. Um, but if not, I'm going to give it one or two more minutes and I think we'll close there. Michael and the rest of the A-level students will, of course, be available uh, to answer any questions that, that boys or girls have. Um, they're welcome to approach them or the grade 11s for that matter. They will be very happy to answer any questions. Okay. <laughs> right, I think that's it. So thank you very much, everybody, for attending. Um, you're very welcome to contact me if you have any more questions. Uh, please fill in the survey that I've sent out. Um, and uh, as I say, you will have the option there to, to request another session or individual discussion with me. Um, and we'll take things from there. Thank you very much. Have a good evening.